Welcome, my friendly traveler, to the Planeswalker Project. You know, we're so caught up in the digital world these days, it feels almost as though we've forgotten to appreciate the bountiful world that lives around us. When was the last time you went on a walk in the woods just to enjoy the scenery? Listen to the music of the forest, all the wonderful creatures that dwell within. Those moments and sensations are enchanting, and in this video, I hope to bring you something to remind us all of the beauty that we might otherwise miss. One of my favorite beings in the magic world, Duran the Siege Tower, is going to lead us through an enchanting evening. Hope you're all up to stay for a spell. My friend Duran is an abzan colored treefolk shaman. From the great forest of Lorwyn, his magic brings a unique angle to gameplay at the commander table. He costs one mana each of black, white, and green, and as a 0-5, he comes with the static ability where each creature assigns combat damage equal to their toughness rather than their power. This is a very unusual ability for a creature to carry, making for some interesting uses for Duran. The most common approach for Duran decks is to make Treefolk Tribal, utilizing the various Treefolks from throughout Magic's history, many of which have a noticeably higher toughness than their power, and to serve as a low-curve aggro deck. Duran himself functions as a 5-5 during combat, but I like to enhance him using the various enchantments this deck also runs. So rather than take the traditional route of running Duran Treefolk, I instead opt to build Duran Enchantress. We're going to start with perhaps the most vital engine this deck has to offer. The Enchantress engine that we're going to utilize will give us a card draw for each enchantment that we play. Given we have nearly a half dozen Enchantresses, getting two or three will give us an intense boom. Our Gothian Enchantress, Enchantress's Presence, Eidolon of Blossoms, Mesa and Verderan Enchantress, Seder Enchanter, and Sistesan Champion will each give us a card draw with any enchantment we cast, and these were the first cards I included in this deck for that reason. Card draw being a tremendous aspect of my deck building process, I feel like these cards can sit in play without being too much the center of attention of the table, and with just two or three of these in play, we really can begin churning through our deck to get to those key cards that are going to land us a victory. I also have a few other cards that are not official enchantresses, but they do provide us a similar function in caring about our enchantment playing. Archon of Sun's Grace gives us a 2-2 white Pegasus that also has flying and while it's out on the battlefield also lifelink. I personally prefer this to Ajani's Chosen as the flying and lifelink make for better creature value. Along those same lines is Sigil of the Empty Throne which gives 4-4 flying angels. Again, I'm going for getting as much value out of these enchantments as absolutely possible. Blessed Spirits gets a plus one plus one counter every time we cast an enchantment, and with the flying, this can become a big creature that's also very hard to block. Core Spirit Dancer is also, in a sense, an enchantress, giving us a card draw when we cast our aura enchantments. This deck does put some focus into enchanting our creatures to make them large and evasive, and so the additional card draw is a welcome engine. SRAM Senior Edificer also gives us a card whenever we play an aura, enchantment, or vehicle, although we do run far more auras than either of the other two. Speaking of auras, let's get into those next. They are the main theme of the deck, and so we will want to take a look at which ones we're running and why. Alpha Authority is a very nice variant on Swiftfoot Boots, which are not in the deck as they are not an enchantment. Being only blockable by one creature will become very relevant once we give our enchanted creature Trample, and given that it's a 2-drop, I really like this card as a protection spell. Ancestral Mask is a huge pump spell, giving it plus 2, plus 2 for each other enchantment on the battlefield. This includes your opponents, this includes your non-auras. Again, it's a low-cost, low-mana intensity card, and I really love the artwork on this one. Bear Umbra is just silly. It gives Totem Armor a layer of protection from any destruction, and upon the enchanted creature attacking, you untap all of your lands. What's not to like? It's also a bear. I'm sure Graham Stark would be proud right now. Darksteel Mutation is an aura, but it's one I'd rather stick on my opponent's biggest annoyance. Because screw the rules, you're a bug now. Druid's Call is a personal favorite of mine. If you've been following my channel long enough, you'll know I'm an insane fan of squirrels. Being able to produce squirrels is just gravy, and given that I often stick this on Duran, I can generate a ton of furry little friends in just one swing. Ethereal Armor is given, getting plus one plus one for each enchantment we control, and first strike, yes please. Flicker Form is in a sense board wipe protection for the big guy we enchant. 
See, one of the biggest threats to this deck is removal. And should our creature that's loaded up on enchantments be at risk, we just pay four and our creature and all of its auras disappear for the turn. Think of it as the dollar store variant of Teferi's Protection. Rancor is that trample that I mentioned earlier, and at one green mana with the recursion attached to it, Rancor will be one of your best auras to run. Sage's Reverie is also pretty nice, potentially drawing a ton of cards and giving a tremendous power buff. Also note that it just cares about auras that you control that are attached to creatures, so it doesn't matter if the auras are on one creature or the love is spread throughout the field. Song of the Dryads is also really nice. You just look at whatever the biggest threat is on the table, be it a creature, a pestilence land, enchantment, plane, whatever. It's a tree now. Enjoy tapping for one green mana. Spirit Mantle is also fun, essentially making the enchanted creature unblockable. And I love this sort of innocuous card that doesn't seem to give a super big buff, but when you look at this from the context of a creature, possibly Duran, being enchanted with five or six buffing cards, suddenly this becomes a lot more dangerous that creatures can't touch it. I also have Eidolon of Countless Battles, who is technically can be an aura for four mana, who gets plus one plus one for each creature you control, as well as plus one plus one for each aura you control. This can be brutal, as it can give a tremendous boost, and should that enchanted creature die, the Eidolon just hops off and becomes a creature on its own with the same buffs it gave the enchanted creature. Alongside those auras, however, I do have a few value enchantments that I use to either control the board state, get value for myself, or just handle problematic cards. Assault Formation gives me redundancy on Duran's ability. He lets me use that ability even if Duran's not in play. I can also dump excess mana into buffing my creature's toughness, which is a nice little add-in. Aura of Silence is a pleasant tax on my opponent's artifacts and enchantments, and I can sacrifice it to get rid of one in a pinch. Authority of the Consuls and Blind Obedience are both great to shut down opponent's aggression, and I adore the extort tacked onto Blind Obedience. Exploration gives me Land Base Ramp, allowing me two land drops per turn to put me far ahead early on. Ghostly Prison and Sphere of Safety both are Pillow Fort cards to protect me from any potential attacks. Karmic Justice is a very pleasant way for me to be passive-aggressive in my playstyle. Suggesting that you should destroy something of mine, I do have all the power in my world to destroy your stuff, namely your lands. I'm not above subtle and land destruction. Mana Bloom is an include that a YouTube commenter long ago convinced me to try out, and I love it. Having a mana sink that can be reused to re-trigger my Enchantress engine, even if I'm only paying one green mana, is just lovely. Sterling Groves gives my enchantments Shroud, which is good, as the ones that grant Hexproof or major buffs are going to be the targets of our opponents' naturalize effects. Stony Silence is a nice middle finger to Soul Ring and its ilk, and I only do run two artifacts in this entire deck, and so more often than not, this card doesn't affect me. And of course, Sylvan Library is there for additional card draw. I have a few tutors We're using Commune with the Gods, Idyllic Tutor, Crew Fixes Insight, Open the Armory, and Enlightened Tutor. I personally picked these over some of the other ones for the mana cost. I don't like cards that cost more than four mana in commander decks, especially ones like this, because I'd rather use that mana to cast more spells rather than searching for a spell on one turn and having to wait a whole cycle of the table to get that card out. And these are great for snagging up those key enchantments when I need them. Now then, removal. I know that we've talked about some methods of getting rid of stuff by turning it into a bug, turning it into a tree, but sometimes you do need to send a stronger message. Slaughter the Strong lets me target my Duran, maybe my Enchantresses, they all have zero power to begin with, and then everything else dies. This is a very fun deterrent to decks wanting to go big or go home with a simple, man, it's a shame your commander's a 10-10 and you've already casted them twice. Anguished and Unmaking and Utter End just say nay. Crows and Grip is my choice for a naturalized effect. That split second is what puts it up above most other removal. And of course, we're in black and green, so thusly, putrefy. Lastly, let's talk about some cards that need mentioning that I couldn't really think of another category to plop them into. Aegis of the Gods gives us Hexproof, so no more targeting me with your discardy spells and all that nonsense. Destiny Spinner ensures that our creatures and enchantments do not have to worry about counter magic. I can also go with Lord Nyssa of the Enchanty Boys and make my lands into big hasty trampley things, so that's pretty neat. 
Skeleton Key is the other not Soul Ring artifact in this deck, and it's in the deck solely for Duran. See, the Skulk mechanic says that the creature that has Skulk cannot be blocked by anything with greater power. Technically, Duran does have zero power, and so with the Skeleton Key on him, Duran at his base power and toughness is entirely unblockable. I would have considered including things like Glistening Oil or Phyresis in the deck to make Duran a bigger threat and put some nasty infect, but I for some reason decided to have a heart this time around. So the main goal of this deck is to get out my enchantment engine very early, start putting out my stacks pieces like the Stony Silence and the Aura of Silence and kindly tell opponents to hush their tush, and then get Duran out, enchant the living hell out of him, and start swinging. My engine ensures that I can consistently draw into more threats, keep the gas a-flowing, and then end the game with a giant alpha strike from the Whomping Willow. Seems rather simple, yes? What really drew me into this deck, though, is its unpredictability. With Duran, as I stated before, a lot of people are going to go into it expecting tree folk or big butt creatures, and so having that sort of aura, enchantment, control -y theme is really out of the norm. I had considered playing things like Smothering Tithe, which I'm sure a lot of people are going to be confused why it's not in there. I only chose not to play Smothering Tithe because I really wanted to keep this deck strong, but not something that's going to play anything that's immediately going to get a target on my head. That's also part of the reason why I chose not to play the Infect stuff, because a lot of the times when you start playing the cards that have a lot more of a threat level, you're going to start getting targeted a lot quicker, and this deck really doesn't want to get targeted. It wants to just sort of play a few things, start playing more things, draw into a few more threats, and then start building up like maybe one creature, maybe a few, and start really going wide. Of course, there are a lot of other options that you could bid in there. Heavenly Blade Master is a great option, especially since Duran in play would let her use that 6 toughness as the baseline for her combat damage. You know, we have Smothering Tithe, as I mentioned, Umbra Mystic. You really can go really far with what you're doing with enchantments. You don't have to stick to just the Voltron strategy. You could go with more of just a generic enchantment strategy. I went with the Auras because I still really like using Duran as a Voltron commander, and I wanted to incorporate that somehow into the deck. So with that, our look at my Duran Enchantress deck does come to a close. What do you like about this deck? What don't you like? Let me know down in the there. Leave a like or stuff. Remember to subscribe. And as always, I'll catch you all in the next video.